Hey Gear Seekers, I'm Nick. 13th Gen is just around the corner. So I figured that we'd take a look at some of these new Z790 boards. But before I see comments with people saying, oh, Z790 is a dead platform. Well, this one is a little bit interesting because the ROG Strix Z790A Gaming Wi-Fi D4 could quite possibly be the last new DDR4 motherboard that you can buy ever. But as usual with these motherboard videos, these videos are not reviews, they're just overviews so we can take a bit of a look at everything on the board and what physically comes in the box with a brand new board. So let's take a look at this, cause this might just be the last one that we ever see with DDR4 that you can buy brand new. Let's take a look. All right, ladies and gents, here it is, the ASUS ROG Strix Z790A Gaming Wi-Fi D4, but let's get the motherboard out of the way so we can take a bit of a close look at everything that comes with this board in the box. First off, we've got the Wi-Fi antenna for the built-in Wi-Fi 6E and for the Bluetooth. There's also a bunch of different M.2 accessories. There's some spare clips because there's no more screws for the M.2 slots on this board. And there's also some isolation pads and all that stuff as well. There's also a spare thermal pad, which actually is quite nice because if you install M.2 drives a few times on these boards, the included thermal pads can get a bit manky and it is nice that this is actually included here. There's also a collection of zip ties or cable ties to help you cable manage your system once you've built it. There's also this black and white ROG keyring. And the funny thing is, when I was at PAX a few weeks ago, I actually saw lots of people have this hanging out of their pockets. I don't know if ASUS has given these out, but I think some people might have just had it from buying a board. There's also the user guide. Now, this user guide will help you figure out what everything is, where everything is, and it will help you if you've never ever built a PC before. There's also this little card here that says, get ready to rock the gaming world with ROG Strix. I mean, you guys can read this. It's basically just telling you to install Armory Crate to control your RGB and all your drivers and basically everything you need to get up and running. There's also this sheet of ROG stickers. Usually I would be like, oh, this is kind of tacky, but, I think these stickers in silver and white look very, very cool. All right, let's get that Z790A Gaming Wi-Fi D4 unsheathed so we can take a bit of a closer look at everything that is on this board. Let's do it. First off, we've got the front panel audio header. There's a PWM fan header. There's two three pin five volt addressable RGB headers. There's a Thunderbolt header if you're using an add-in card. There's two USB 2.0 headers for things like RGB controllers and liquid coolers and all that stuff. Another three PWM fan headers for fans obviously. And the front panel connector for all your lights and all your switches to let you know your system is up and running. On the right hand edge of the board, there are four SATA ports for your 2.5 inch SSDs or your spinning rush drives. There's a USB 3.2 front panel header connector, a USB type C front panel header connector, the 24 pin power connector to send juice to your brand new Z790A gaming Wi-Fi D4, and a little LED array that'll help you diagnose your system because it's kind of like a postcode LED screen. Along the top edge of the board, there are some more RGB headers. There's a 12 volt four pin one, a three pin five volt addressable RGB header. There is two more PWN fan headers, one for the CPU fan, one for your liquid cooler pump. And there's also two 8-pin EPS power connectors to send juice to your brand new 12th or 13th gen Intel processor. Now, for the PCIe slot configuration, you've got one PCIe Gen 5x16 slot, which is the top slot. Then you've got a by one slot, which is a PCIe Gen 3 slot. There's then two PCIe Gen 4x4 slots on the board as well. So one, those are the two slots towards the bottom edge of the board. For the VRM layout, you're looking at a 16 plus one phase digital VRM setup with 70 amp power stages. And as you can see here, the cooling and the heat sinks for this VRM layout are quite hefty. This board supports Intel's LGA 1700 socket, which is compatible with Intel's 12th and 13th generation processors. At the time of filming, those 13th gen processors are not out yet. And if you've never seen inside of the LGA 1700 socket, this is how it looks. 
if we flip the board over, you can see that there's actually not a lot going on on the back of the board. There is a nice silk screen of the ROG logo and some DNA looking stuff. But if we look closely at the back of the socket, you can see that it retains that cooler compatibility with LGA 1700 and the older 115X and LGA 1200 cooler mounting as well. This is kind of a hallmark of all of ASUS's boards from the start of LGA 1700. As for RAM, as mentioned, this board only supports DDR4 memory, supports up to 128 gigs of DDR4 RAM, and 5333 mega transfers overclocked with XMP. There's also this little button here which opens up the top PCIe slot. Now, the difference here is you'll notice that when I'm pushing it, it's actually pushing the spring mechanism back. This is new for these Z790 boards. Although the Z690 boards had something similar, this mechanism is slightly different. All right, let's pull off the M.2 cover so we can take a bit of a look at the M.2 configuration on this board. In total, there are four M.2 slots. There's one PCIe Gen 5 M.2 slot at the top, which is connected directly into the CPU. Additionally, there are also three more PCIe Gen 4 M.2 slots towards the bottom of the board as well. Much like other boards that we've seen recently, this board also features no M.2 screws. Yep, that's actually a feature. They have these little latches to hold the drive into place. In terms of rear I.O., we've got a display port connector, HDMI, we've got some USB, we've got a clear CMOS button, a BIOS flashback button, some USB type A, 20 gigabit USB type C, 10 gigabit USB type C, 2.5 gigabit ethernet, Wi-Fi 6E and 7.1 digital surround sound with optical and SPDIF output, as well as an integrated IO shield. Ladies and gents, I hope you enjoyed this first look and overview of this new ASUS board, the ROG Strix Z790A Gaming Wi-Fi D4. As I mentioned, we're, I don't think we're going to be seeing any DDR4 boards after 13th gen. And like I said at the start as well, we have seen comments from people already saying that Z790 is a dead platform. Well, you're kind of right, but you're kind of wrong at the same time because the life cycle for these boards, just because it's the end of a generation, doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be bad. Remember, a lot of people will actually build PCs for three to four years anyway. A lot of the time, especially at the end of generations with motherboards, we're seeing CPU performance be pretty crazy, except with 11th gen. <laughs> I can see that if people use boards like this, they're probably gonna be building a system to last them for quite a few years. And yes, there will be no immediate upgrade path, but at the same time, we don't know that for sure, right? We just don't know that for sure. One thing I wanted to mention as well, something that I noticed that was quite cool on this board is with the Z690 boards and some of the X670 boards that we're seeing from all these manufacturers, they've got that little button to open up the top PCIe slot. I think ASUS has gone one step further with this board and made it completely spring loaded. So there's no actual clip. You press the button, it opens and closes. So when you push the card in, it clips in and you can press it again to release the slot as well. The other ones that we've seen, you basically, you press it and it's open. This one will close itself and lock automatically. So 
I thought that was quite cool because it shows a little bit of innovation with these boards. However, if you're interested in getting your hands on the ASUS ROG Strix Z790A Gaming Wi-Fi D4, as far as I can tell right now, they're gonna be going for around 379 US dollars or around, get this right, 749 Aussie dollars at the time of filming this video. Now here in Australia, I've actually seen a little bit of a weird thing with Z790 so far. Some boards are actually available to buy already, but as of the time of this video going live, 13th gen isn't out yet. I don't know what the story is there, but it's almost like Intel doesn't care about this platform at all because it is basically exactly the same as Z690, but people would go absolutely insane if Intel released new CPUs and not a new chipset, but either way, people aren't happy. Now, what we saw with, let's say, Ryzen 5000 and X570 was they just offered a bunch of BIOS updates to update the BIOSes for all of those new CPUs, and then the board started shipping with support for those new CPUs. And then we saw X570S later. I don't think Intel is committing to 13th gen for as long as everyone wants them to. And I'm not trying to sound like I'm for AMD or for Intel, but history shows us that this has been the pattern with Intel and AMD. So regardless of who you choose, their whole purpose is to sell more CPUs and motherboards, regardless of it being AMD or Intel. It doesn't matter who's your favorite being AMD or Intel, they're both doing the same thing. We've seen with X670 and Ryzen 7000 that sales have been pretty poor. I am not sure what's going to happen with 13th gen and Z790, but you know, I don't have a crystal ball at the end of the day. If you like this video, you know what to do. Hit the like button, make sure you get yourself subscribed to see more videos like this. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. You peak, we seek. Actually, like my honest opinion on this board without actually using it is, I think it's pretty interesting. It looks very, very cool. I can see us doing a white PC build with this coming very soon. I've got heaps of white DDR4, so. It'd be good just to get a little bit of extra time with some DDR4 before it all goes away. Thanks for watching.